Hi everyone, it's Gail. I am here to share with you my strategies at estate sales. I've had three really successful estate sales shopping trips and it made me think maybe I could share with you what I look for when I go to estate sales. So, um, I have some kind of categories where I shoot to those areas of the sale first. And so we'll just go through those. My first one is I go look at the games. Um, a recent sale, I found all these bingo cards and the little, um, the little things that you put on the bingo game. And so I have all these vintage bingo cards that I found. And, um, you know, they were, you can see they were $4 for the pack which, you know, you're going to pay more at an estate sale than you do at a garage sale. But if you find good stuff, it's all, you know, it's still going to be cheaper than, than in an antique store or something. So then the other thing I found there was um, some vintage playing cards. So this one, the pack was not yet open, although I, I did open it because I used one of these rose ones in um, a journal I just did. So I got that pack, this one, kind of a art deco -y sort of cool thing. And then um, these two, which apparently were first class gifts uh, for people who fly first class on Aloha Airlines. So um, they're, they're really beautiful. And again, these were in the package. And so um, I pulled out a couple that I want to send in some happy mail, but aren't those pretty? So um, that's what I found in the game section is, uh, it, it, or were those fun things, you know, and sometimes you can, you can find some vintage games, especially at estate sales. So then the other place that I go um, is straight to the linens <laughs> and um, to find the doilies and things that I use on covers or in layering in my journals. This whole baggie kind of came from one estate sale and these little doilies were anywhere from a quarter to a dollar a piece. But um, there's some really wonderful ones to work with and um, I, just, I just used one of these on a recent journal too. So I go to the linens and see what I can find, whether it be doilies or handkerchiefs, embroidered things that, you know, can be cut up and that sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's another section that I go to. And then, um, of course, I go to the crafts and sewing section. And at a recent sale, let me push this over a little bit. Um, in the sewing section, I found these um, vintage sewing magazines um, that are, they're, they're so fun and they have some really, really kind of fun images in them. So I found two of these. These are from the 1930s. Look at that. So um, they'll be fun to cut up and use. As well, this one actually, I'm thinking this might make a really fun cover um, of a journal. But uh, so I found I found those sitting um, kind of in the sewing stuff with all the random thread and that kind of thing. And then I found this pack for four dollars, and I thought, well, I don't know what's in it exactly, but we'll check it out. And it just has a bunch of old old patterns and. Um, kind of fun stuff. This is really cool. Um, so I just have to, uh, just have to go through that and see what all it has in it. But, um, it was kind of a grab bag and there were, I did see that there were a couple of 1970s patterns in that. So, um, so those things I found. And then the other thing I kind of look for, this is my, is my bin of um, laces and trims and things. And so, you know, often you'll just get the bits and pieces that are left, but that's okay because that's 
what I use in the journals are the bits and pieces. So I just kind of have them organized by color and um, this is from a lot of sales and um, and then seam binding. There's seam binding in here too that I can crinkle up and, and use. So all of those are um, were from the sewing section as well as, let me show you this, this uh, embroidery book that on the inside it has all these fun little images i just i just put a page of of this in one of my recent journals too so that's what i found and i was particularly thinking about that because um i've been sort of enamored with the five binder or five ring binders and i have this one that i want to make into a um into a junk journal and it's it this one was actually was mine when i very first learned to sew and so it's probably from the 1970s yep 1970 so um anyway so i was kind of on the lookout for for sewing things so that kind of brings me to um when you kind of have this new obsession, which I do with these books. Um, I look for these, and I just I just found this one at an estate sale, um, and it's got it's got handwritten um, recipes in it, and and so that's always kind of cool to see. But this has been a well used one. I can you can tell from the pages, but um, as you can see. I paid a dollar for it so um, the the cover on this one's in a little bit rough shape so I think I'll mix media it then I also have this one which it's older and the cover is in is in pretty rough shape so I'm gonna have to do some surgery on that to see if I can can bring that back but this one's uh, 1950s look at this binder holder thing isn't that cool so um, I'm, I'm on the lookout for those now as well. Um, and so that brings us kind of to, to the books, which actually I'll get to those in a minute. Another section that is kind of a smaller section usually that I go look in. Let me, <laughs> I'm having trouble with all this stuff. Um, is the paper section. You know, just old papers and random things that people have that they have kept over the years. Um, I found these little bridge cards that have such sweet images on them. And um, so, so that I found in the kind of the paper section. These are just some memor memoranda sheets, but they'll be really fun to put in smaller journals. And... Um, then these recipe cards, they have a pretty little rose on them. Found those in, in the paper section. These little 1970s, it's, a, it's like a book of postcards and has that little image. And then this one is, um, and I just put this in a recent journal as well. They are little stationary things, but they fold up to be like an envelope so I found that in the paper section too so the paper section often I'll find like page protectors or um, various kinds of papers that you know that you can use in your journals ledger papers or graph papers or whatever so the paper section is a good one to go to too and just you know the desk stuff that people that people have so then, um, then the book section, I always go to the book section and I want to show you a couple of the things that I've recently got. Um, I found this, it's 1976-77 apothecary catalog, but it has got such cool ads in it. And I think I can just like, look at this one. I can just cut this up and make some really fun ephemera with this. So that was one. Um, here's another one, 77, 78. I don't know if 
Oh, Caswell and Massey. I, I think they're still in business and everything, but there's just, they did their catalogs in a totally vintage way, and so they'll be, they'll be fun to cut up and, and just stick the little bits and pieces in the pockets of journals. Look at that one. So, found that. Of course, I always look for children's books, um, for the images in children's books. Again, I paid a dollar for this book. Um, and it's got, it's got some, some fun color. Well, that's not a fun image. Gee whiz, that was kind of violent for, for a child. <laughs> but yeah, some of them are, um, are kind of fun though. Some of the images. So, I mean, this is a bigger one, but often I find the golden books and, and those kind of things. So, so yeah, just fun children's images. So I always look for those. I always look for nature, too. I actually used the dust jacket on this in my um, gardening journal, the five ring binder gardening journal that I recently did. This is called An Introduction to Nature, and I think the pages will be fun to use in in journals too it's it's a big book so um you know i could just put these folded in half in a signature but it has beautiful images so i look for nature this was another one that i found um a nature atlas i love the dust jacket on this one so we'll probably use that in something look at look at that isn't that cool so again, it's just all kinds of fun nature images, um, trees and leaves. There's a few maps in here. So those kind of things. Um, I look for Reader's Digest books because they make great altered books. And I loved this cover. So I'm saving this one to make into an altered book. And then um, random things that I end up finding. This, this book, The Complete Cheerful Cherub, um, just has these sweet little images in it with little, I don't know, words to live by or something. And so I picked it up and thought, well, that'll be another thing that would be fun to um, cut up and, you know, and include in pockets and things. And um, the book is in good shape, too, and so the cover could possibly be turned into a journal as well. So, and then, um, I should have put a little, I'll put a piece of paper across this, but I found this at a recent sale. It's a World Atlas, and the cover is leather. I hope the camera is picking that up. I've got a piece of paper across the gentleman's name because we don't need to do that. Um, but it's falling apart already. So I think this will make an absolutely fabulous journal cover. And then on the inside, it's all, it's all maps. So it'll be fun to make, um, you know, put it in travel journals or make envelopes out of them, whatever. So so I, I hope that helps to just have a couple of go-to places that, that you run to when you go to an estate sale. Um, it's a great way to, to get items for making your journals at a more reasonable cost than, than you can get at antique stores and stuff. So I hope that's helpful in some way and I will talk to you next time. I have a couple of custom journals in the works and so I'll be back with those. Thanks so much. Everybody have a great rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.